right, so let's take a look at wind corrections in a holding pattern. So as always, we will do north up. And uh, we're just gonna do a simple hold here. Say we've got a fix like a VOR, and we're gonna hold south. I always like to draw the way we fly. We always fly inbound on the, towards the fix on the inbound leg. And then uh, standard hold will be uh, right turns, of course, and come around like this. Got our outbound leg and then our inbound leg. So this is the ground track for a calm wind holding pattern. And the uh, comparison or the contrast, you know, with uh, VFR flying, we, uh, we always do wind corrections in the traffic pattern to hold a nice rectangular ground track, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's different for instrument work. Instrument work's not about ground track. Um, there's actually only a couple things that stay the same. So, um, so the, uh, what, what, what stays the same is uh, our inbound leg. We always want that to be what? Mm -hmm. We want it to be well on track. Um, you want it yep. To so it's a course we're tracking. Yep. Or, and the time is one minute. Yep. So we always have a one minute inbound leg. And what about the turns? They're always what? Standard rate. Turns. Standard rate. Exactly. Exactly. So um, those are the two things that stay consistent. We have a standard rate turn, and we have a one minute inbound leg. So this represents a calm wind ground track. Let's go ahead and divide the page here, and let's say that we have a wind that is uh, pretty strong out of this direction. So north is up, so we got a wind coming out of the northeast. So we have the same fix, we have the same inbound leg, but then if we had a strong wind coming out of this direction, we're still gonna do a standard rate turn like we talked about, but the wind is gonna hold us over. We have a headwind here. So as we do that standard rate turn, I'm gonna kind of exaggerate here, say it's a really strong wind, we come around the corner, compared to what we had with calm wind, you see how the wind held us sure. over towards the west right. in this example, correct? Well, then we know that we want to end up at this point right here. Well, if we've got a really strong wind coming it's this way, us. yeah, so we actually need to be over, if this is a calm wind, we actually need to be over here somewhere. So that when we do a standard rate turn here, we come over, see if I can kind of draw it rounded here, to a point like this. Well, now we need to get from here to here. This is really exaggerated. This would be a really strong wind. But we end up with this keyhole kind of shape. Because again, what stays the same? The same One minute inbound minute. tracking a course. And I, I just like to emphasize, like, like you already said, this is a course we're tracking. That means if grandma's house is right here, we always fly over right. grandma's house. When we're, when we're holding on the 180 degree radial, whether it's left turns or right turns, doesn't matter. We're holding on the 180 degree radial. We go over grandma's house every time, no matter what the wind is, it, it, it's a course. Well, so what we're changing is, because we have this really strong wind, we do a standard rate turn, we fly over here to a point, and then we do another standard rate turn. Well, how do we know to navigate to this point? It's not really navigation. What we do is um, kind of a rule of thumb. And the rule of thumb is that whatever wind correction we needed on the inbound, we triple it the other direction on the outbound. So for example, if we were holding a 10 degree crab into the wind here, that's more than 10, excuse my artwork, <laughs> then you would do a 30 degree crab into the wind out here. Um, so let's just use some numbers. We already said that north is up. So if we're holding a heading of zero, one, zero, we're crabbing towards the east, 10 degrees. You so with me? One two, yeah. Zero, yeah. Two, zero. So, so if, if calm wind is one, eight, zero, we want to triple the 10. We need to go 30 degrees that way. Yeah. 180. One, one, five, zero. There you go. One, five, zero. So yeah, if this was a heading of zero, one, one. zero, crabbing into the wind, then this would be a heading of one, five, zero. Don't pay attention to the angle of my airplanes. <laughs> uh, because again, calm wind, we'd go 180, like we had over here, that would be 180. So we're going counterclockwise, 30 degrees. And in the airplane, you just look at your heading indicator to do the math. Um, so there's an, an example there. Well, if I can get my hand around the camera here, let's do one the other direction. So let's, let's say now we have the wind coming really strong out of the uh, northwest, okay? We have the same fix, and we have the same inbound leg. 
but now the wind is going to be pushing us so we're going to have a tailwind coming around to some point over here and we need to connect it to a point somewhere over here so the keyhole kind of goes this way so we kind of come around pretend that's a little more rounded like that so again we still have a one minute inbound so now we might be correcting let's say 15 degrees this direction so instead of 360 what would that be 345 345 so let, yeah let's say we're going 345 here so we we see that to track the inbound we've got uh, 15 degrees into the wind well normally we'd go 180 outbound we have to so we got a triple yeah yeah there you go 45 degrees so 15 oh, times 3 is 45 so if we normally would do 180 we're going to go clockwise 225 there you go you're quicker than i am 225 would be our crab our, our our heading our expected heading uh to crab to get us back over with that headwind so that we can track the inbound so that's that's what we mean by triple and so you know that and you know that because when you're tracking your inbound you're paying radio attention or whatever yep you know to stay i have to keep putting yep. in yep you you, know, yeah exactly you only have a minute to play with it and right. it's especially tough if this is a vor because you get into that cone of confusion uh like we've seen but uh, that's exactly right. And it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, you know, in, in real life, as long as you stay on the holding side, you're legal <laughs> and, and stay in a reasonable distance. Uh, for the check ride, um, you know, the examiner wants to see that you're putting in the correct corrections. You know, if you were to, if you were to do that, that 45 degree correction the wrong way, now you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, obviously uh, that would take you even farther away with a, uh, with a tailwind. Okay, so that's heading corrections. Let's talk about time corrections real quick. I didn't do a direct crosswind on purpose. I said the wind's coming out of, uh, let's go back to this example, the wind's coming out of the northeast. So in calm wind, we know we would have one minute inbound, one minute outbound. You know, it'd be a nice ground track racetrack. The, um, with a headwind component here when we're coming inbound, let's say that this only took uh, 50 seconds to go inbound. We're not talking about the entry. This is after we're established. And because of the headwind, uh, I'm sorry, headwind. Yeah, it would be the other Under, way. Yeah, it'd be the other way. Thank you. It'd be, let's say it takes a minute 10. Okay. So if it takes a minute 10 to come inbound, everything else staying the same. We're keeping the same power. We're keeping the same indicated airspeed, um, meaning true airspeed. Um, what's changing is our ground speed because of the wind. So if it takes a minute 10, I don't know if you remember, I, I mentioned this briefly on our last flight, but um, on this one, we match the correction. So if, if it took an extra 10 seconds, we take that same 10 seconds off on the outbound. So if we're seeing a minute so 10 to go inbound, to we'd go outbound for 50 seconds. Okay. So we, you know, compared to the minute. So outbound for 50, while we're also doing these heading corrections we talked about, because again, the wind's coming at an angle, uh, 50 seconds outbound with the tailwind, by the time we turn inbound, should give us a minute inbound. Um, let's say the next time it takes a minute five. Well, we still need to do a correction. Maybe next time we'd go 45 seconds outbound. So you just kind of play with that. Um, and, and you find that, yeah, 45 seconds outbound. Now it's giving me a minute inbound. I got, you know, as long as you keep everything else the same, still doing standard rate turns, still holding the same indicated airspeed, you should be in great shape. So here we've got uh, still a headwind on the inbound. It'd be the same thing. So it's just coming from the other direction. So if it, if it took a, a minute 10 to go inbound, we'd go 50 seconds outbound. Um, if we change one, let's, let's change this one, and let's say it's actually a uh, tailwind. Uh, let's see, to make it match, uh, I'm gonna have to actually go... From the south to the east. Well, I want it to be a tailwind from the south. Still have to crab into it though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I want it to be going but you're you're sharper than me today. Yeah, from the southeast. There you go. Well, that's rare. So now we have it's a. Birthday, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's early. All right. I uh, there we go. From the southeast. You're right because uh, now we have a tailwind on the inbound leg, um, but we we have the wind holding us like we already drew. So we would have a headwind component as we come around this corner. Now we have a headwind going here, and then we have a tailwind as we come around here. So there you go. That, that matches. And it would still be the same uh, minute for minute, basically. Yeah, so so in this example, let's say that, that we're doing everything right and it only takes 45 seconds to go inbound. How long would you go outbound on the next minute one? Minute 15. There you go, minute 15. So you take that 15 that you were early, you add it onto the minute outbound. So in this example, we're crabbing 10 degrees into the wind. Um, 
and then we do a standard rate turn. We fly heading 150 because we tripled the correction for the heading. Uh, instead of 180, we're going 150. We go, uh, did I say 10 seconds? So, uh, yeah, if it was 50, 50 seconds. Yeah, yeah it would be a minute 10. And then another standard rate turn should put you right on. Uh, other quick reminders, it's important to uh, start your clock when you're beam the fix. So if it's a, um, if this is a VOR hold, we're gonna have a two flag when we're tracking inbound. And uh, I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it here again. A lot of people, when they're looking to start the clock outbound, they just say, I'm looking for the flag flip. I, I would rather say, I'm looking for the two flag because sometimes we have a two flag, it goes to a from on this side, and then as they're coming around here somewhere, it flips to a from when they're not looking. And there's, uh, I'm sorry, it flips to a two when they're not looking. And then it's still on two, it's still on two. They're waiting for the flip and they, they missed it. <laughs> so, so just say I'm looking for a two flag. So if you glance over and you see the two, you're like, oh, start the clock. And you probably just missed it, barely. Um, so then you'll have a two flag on the, the VR indicators. We're coming around until we pass the fix again. Um, and then start the time inbound as soon as you're inbound-ish. <laughs> Meaning, depending on what you're doing for this wind correction, um, your, your heading might be over you know, to here a little bit, it might be over here a little bit, but basically once you turn in your heading inbound, even if you're still kind of centering that needle, um, start the clock uh, in the correct place there. Because if you wait till you intercept, you might be up here somewhere you know, while you're figuring out those corrections. But as you, as you come around and you're heading towards the fix, you start the clock inbound, that'll keep it consistent. So uh, there's the example of uh, ground track compared to calm wind versus uh, wind coming out of the east or wind coming out of the west. We also talked about headwind and tailwind. Um, why is this important? I think it's important to visualize what's happening um, and to, to understand that what's staying the same is that inbound course and the standard rate turns. Um, I think it's just conceptually, it's important to understand that you're gonna have a keyhole shape anytime you have a crosswind. Um, and this is not like VFR traffic pattern flying where we always want the same ground track no matter what the wind's doing. This is different. Um, and uh, so that's why I think it's important and, um, and it also helps understand why we match the time correction inbound versus outbound. If we, you know, if we take off 10 here, we add a 10 on the outbound and why we triple the correction for the heading because on one case we're tracking a, a course, in another case we're physically trying to move to a different location so that we're ready for the next standard rate turn. That, that's what gives us the keyhole and that's why we triple the correction for headings. So, Any questions? Nope. Cool. One other thing that's kind of fun is um, the modern avionics uh, like G1000 with the moving map when you plug in the hold you'll actually see the keyhole shape Huh. Before you even get there, because it knows the winds based on the planning. yeah based on the aircraft's you know heading and ground speed and GPS and everything the the G1000 and, and similar avionics will calculate this out and uh, you'll see the keyhole shape of the hold before you even get there. It's kind of wow. cool. So, yep, fun stuff. All right, let's do it.